Okay, this video is on um, the magnetic field on the axis of a circular hoop. Okay, so what about this magnetic field on the axis of a circular hoop? Here's a circular hoop. It's got um, some current in it. Let's say the current is going around like this. That's the eye through it. It's going around like this. This part is closer to you than this part. And um, they want to know what the magnetic field is, say, right here. Okay, so um, let's call the radius of the hoop R. So the radius from there to here is going to be capital R. Okay, so what we do is we use the law of Biot-Savart. We're going to break this into, um, let's just analyze one little segment of this. A little segment um, DL. And DL is coming out this way. That's the direction of DL coming out that way. It's actually pointed in the y, in the negative y direction right now. At the top, it's pointing in the negative y direction. And um, here I'm going to draw a line that goes straight down to this point. Okay, let's call this distance x. And I'm going to tell you that the field just due to that dl, if you take your right hand and you put it in the direction of the, the current, then, and you curl your fingers, then it's going to be um, a circular field just due to DL, and it's going to point this way. It's going to be at a right angle to this, so it's going to be like that. Okay, now that's going to be, we're going to call that the magnetic field just due to that DL, so that's going to be a dB. Now, um, let's look and see what is the magnetic field due to um, this DL down here. This DL is heading this way. It's heading in the, in the positive Y direction. It's heading that way. And if I take my fingers and, and curl them like that, then right here, if I, if I were to draw the, the a vector from here to there, now that, those look like they're in the same direction, but D, the DL there is actually perpendicular to this to this um, vector, and the magnetic field for this is going to be um, diagonally downward, again at a right angle. So this is going to be at a right angle, and so is this one. This will be at a right angle too. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the magnetic field then, due to those DLs, if we wanted to figure out the magnetic field just due to the one, we'll use the law of Biot-Savart. dB is equal to mu naught times um, I. The, we're going to say that we know the I in this ring. So it's mu naught I times uh, DL times the sine of theta. This is the law of Biot-Savart over 4 pi times this distance squared. Now, what should we call that? Let's call that little r squared. Okay, this distance we're going to call little r. That's this distance as well. Okay, well, um, you see, that's our the magnetic field from this little dl up here. But here's the problem. Each one of these little dls, as you go around, they each point in a completely different direction. So this one points that way, the DL from this points that way, or excuse me, the DB from this points that way. So they're all, it kind of forms a TP around here if you think about it. And for every one up here, there's one down here that's going to cancel. So like this, this part, DB, say Y in this case, or Z rather, that's DBZ, yeah, DBZ is going to cancel with this one, that DBZ. So those are going to cancel, and what you're going to be left with is just, for these two at least, is you're going to just be left with the X components. In fact, you're going to be left with the X components for all of them. Okay, so I need, um, I'm going to say that you only use the X component. Well, the X component is going to be times the cosine of that angle, theta. So that would be, if I wanted just the X component, then I could really add them. 
and that's going to be times the cosine of theta. That's what gets me where this is theta. Okay, well, um, what I'm going to do now is I want to, I'm going to sum those up with an integral. So I have to sum these up. So when I sum these up, I get dbx, I guess I should let you see this equation, there it is, dbx is equal to mu naught i dl, now that sine of theta, this is the angle between dl and r, and so that sine of theta is, that theta there, that's a different theta than this one, so I'm going to call this theta 1 and theta 2. And theta 1 is the angle between dl and r, and I'm going to argue that that's, at a, that's a 90 degree angle. So you don't, uh, the sine of 90 is just 1, so that's going to just turn into 1. It's always at a right angle. Uh, it's tough to see in my drawing, but dl, that, that little vector, is always perpendicular to r. Okay, now, um, so I'm getting rid of that. And then I got the cosine of theta. But you know, theta doesn't change in here. No matter which dl I'm at, theta, this theta, is always the same angle. Same size of angle, at least. And so it's mu naught i dl cosine of theta. And then that's going to be over 4 pi and then r squared. Okay, to get the entire magnetic field then, the entire magnetic field is just going to be summing these all up with an integral. Okay, but you can pull out anything that's not con that's um, you can pull out any constants, and so <clears throat> the mu naught's constant, i is a constant, the theta is a constant, so is the r a constant. So when I pull those all out, I'm just left with mu naught i cosine of theta all over 4 pi r squared and you're summing up all the dl's. Well to sum up all the dl's is just going to, when you sum all these little guys up around the circle, that's going to just give you 2 pi capital R. So that's going to be, the b around there is going to equal mu naught i cosine of theta times 2 pi capital R all over 4 pi R squared. All right, now um, we would like to, get, uh, what we're going to do, we're done, but I want to change that theta into um, terms with little r's and big r's and stuff in it. Okay, so let's take a look at, at theta here. Okay, remember, this is a right angle. The angle that B makes with the R vector, it's always going to be a right angle. And um, this straight line is 180 degrees. This is 180 degrees from, from here to there. And so if that's theta and that's a right angle, then this has to be the complement of theta. This is 90 minus theta. And if this angle is 90 minus theta and that's a right angle, then this is theta. We're back to theta. And so we can say that the cosine of theta, if I want to substitute in, the cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent side, that would be capital R, divided by the hypotenuse, little r. So I'm going to put that in for that. So as it turns out, <coughs> that B... Almost done here. B is going to equal mu naught i 2 pi r over 4 pi r squared. And the cosine of theta we said was capital R over little r. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to sub in then for, r, for lowercase r. Isn't lowercase r... This guy, isn't it r squared plus x squared? So it's, uh, well, the square root of r squared plus x squared. So I'll sub in for that, and then I'll be done. So sub that in, and that's it.
Thanks. Bye.